simple question. How much training is enough? How much? One hour? Eight hours? It depends. depends. That's the right answer. But, so what does it depend on? Action space, yeah. That's right, you're working. So, to save you money, I did a lot of testing. I spent gobs of hours, a couple five models, none of them really very good, because I didn't want to give you an eight second model and compete over here. So I built a bunch of 20 to 30 second models, and I did all the training myself from one hour to eight hours, and I grabbed it all out. Let me share that experience with you. Team here, five models. The uh, there should be one behind the podium. Right? But then most of the team is all based on sports from the 1930s. Model T, the first, yeah, model A, Deluxe, and the Tudor. Those all came progressively much later. about hyperparameters. I use the default hyperparameters for every one of my cases, except two, which I'll share with you in a minute. So default hyperparameters across the board. Here's the standard centerline function that comes right out of the console. No magic out on my part. And what I see is a reward graph that goes up over time. Makes sense, right? And you can see my times are actually pretty good, 26, 27 seconds, 100% trial results, so that it's actually making around the track. And this was five hours of training. Here was six. And you can see as we got six hours, higher reward function further up on the, tra uh, on the, uh, the scale. So do we need to train six hours every time to get those kind of results? What do you think? What's the, what, what are you guys speculating? What's the right amount of training? What's that? It is. How about that? It overfitted, right? I discovered that pretty often. Here's the Model A. Really simple reward function. I am rewarding based upon am I on the track, not center line anymore, but am I on the, at least one wheel on the track, and I'm rewarding heavily for speed. All of these models were built with an action space of um, uh, speed of five. You know, you can't do that anymore in the new console, but the speed was five and uh, granularity of three, so it's an action space of 15 different slots, right? Again, six hours, we get pretty far up. But you can see right here, it starts to fall off towards the end. So I think it's overfitting, right? And sure enough, when I do seven hours, I don't get near the result. So that would tell me maybe six is best. And that's what I called the Model A, the first of the Fords. The Deluxe model came, or sorry, that was the second of the Fords. The, the third one was the Deluxe. Deluxe, I think, came out in 1932, something like that. Very complex model that I stole someplace off the internet. Very complicated model. Hundreds of lines, multiple functions calling each other. And the results were interesting here. At two hours, you get a pretty good result. Seven hours, a slightly better result, but you can see again, it's starting to tail off. And eight hours, the result was worse by quite a bit, several seconds. So again, it's overfitting. I'm overtrained at that point. The Tudor, the best of the early Fords. This is a really simple function that I stole from Scott Pletcher from A-Cloud Guru. He's got a blog, and I want to make sure these were all models that you could find easily. And 
Well, it's on the track based on the number of steps and you get a reward. The Tudor is actually a pretty good model. 21 seconds, 22 seconds, 23, with just two hours of training. And it's still going up at the end of my two hours, so it tells me maybe I could train a little bit longer. So I trained a lot longer, and I got seven hours. And it, again, it's, you see the same thing with those longer periods of time. It starts to tail off, right? So I'm probably not looking so good. And when I go to eight hours, you can see, again, it degraded pretty badly. So I clearly overfitted. So what does this all look like? There's the graph of all the models. And you'll see there's a couple of finite minima here. One is two hours. Every single model, two hours, every single one of them had a very good time at two hours. And only slightly better, only subtly better, like a couple of percent better when you got out here at the six to seven hour range. So I heard people at all the different summits I went to and the different corporate events I did that say, oh, I'm training for 20 hours. You're wasting your money. Don't do that. Two hours is generally pretty good for the basic car that we have here on the existing tracks. Now, the Evo model, of course, is a whole different thing. It's going to take a lot more training because, you know, it's a, a bigger action space. You know, it's just a lot more factors. So then I experimented further. I say, well, I want to go really fast. I don't want to just use five meters a second, so I jacked it up to 12. And I took it and cloned it on the 2019 track and then ran it really fast. And what happened? Most of the models were awful. They were just, you know, they're the guys who run into the wall over here. Terrible, terrible stuff, except for the Deluxe. The Deluxe actually did pretty well. It actually got around the track once out of, you know, how many times that I tested. I, I, uh, I think this is just a further, I, I did um, the fast model with an additional two hours of training, so I cloned it again and trained for two more hours, and I actually got a couple of them to finish fast, but again, they crashed all the time. What's that? What was your speed for the first go around? The speed for the first go around was five meters a second, a granularity of three. I just, I kept it standard for all the five models that I built. What's that? 12. I used tw oh, why did I stop at five? I just picked it as a kind of a because um, from just collo colloquial data, I watched people on doing tracks, and I sort of was gathering evidence about what you know. It's kind of a uh, let's say a casual sensitivity analysis, and I would ask them questions, and I found that five was about the optimal speed uh, for the reInvent 2018 track. So I just kind of gathered that evidence over time, and I was doing a sensitivity analysis here. So. When I jacked it up to 12 meters a second, which we no longer allow, it's just way too fast. The cars would just slip and go off the track. Yeah, I, all this training is in the console. Yeah, but you, speed is 12. Still, it, what are you bringing down? Yeah, it's supposed to go down. It's supposed to go down to, I think, four. Yeah, so basically, any speed you used to see in the console, you, you divide it by three now. So a, a speed of four is about the equivalent of what it used to be called 12, but it's still very fast, and you have to consider that, and that takes a lot more training in order to get it right, but those cars are reckless. You know, they go off the track a lot at high rates of speed. Yeah, we, we had one event that we did where a gentleman ran for four minutes three times in the same day and only completed one lap, and it was a nine-second lap, but he couldn't do it every time. You know, he came back to do it again, and it wouldn't stay on the track. It just wasn't a very stable model. And we're really about stability. So, questions, comments, observations. I tried to save you guys money. That's what I was all about. That's what essays do at AWS. We try to save you money. So, you gonna train for eight hours or two hours? Two hours. <laughs> That's the reason that it started to slow down. Yes. So it overfits your original reward function, meaning it was trying to maximize reward, so it's sacrificing speed. What if you were to train it with only speed being error, like completion time being error, reward function? Uh, you expect it would have been different? I, I think you'll still overfit. It's going to reweight all of the nodes, and I think what happens is it's fitted very clearly just for that one track. And when I took it and applied it to a different track, it didn't do as well. The model wasn't as general. 
So I was trying to build models that were more generalized that would work on a number of different tracks. And if you overfit it to the one track, it certainly doesn't do well. Other questions or comments? The, the, okay, I'm very new in this. Okay. There is the like the center line and the, all that kind of thing. You you keep you kept showing different ones. Uh, where did you get them from, or how can you construct your own to fit? So, from a configuration perspective, yes, I left all the hyperparameters for the first set of models at the default. Okay. And then later on, I changed batch size in the when I uh, trained for additional couple hours. I made the batch size slightly small or larger. I went from 64 to 128. Okay. And that did improve results some, but it took a lot more training time. Okay. So where did I get the models? Mm -hmm. I found all of these either in the console, the centerline models in the console. Yes, centerline is there. The, yeah, and there's two other models there. Yes, there is one. All the others, I just searched for them. Okay. And like I mentioned, I give credit to Scott Pletcher from mm -hmm. Cloud Guru. I stole one of his models. He has a blog, okay. and he uh, every time he went to one of the summits, he posted results of his blog and the model he used. And I took his last one that he actually was racing here. Oh. Because it's publicly available. I want I didn't want to give you guys and let you cheat and you know invest somebody who worked really hard. So I used terrible models. <laughs> Questions? Anything else? Yes, sir. Hi. Um, did you run into a model that actually did benefit from a long hour, hours of training, like a simple model that still uh, was able to improve using more hours? I, I did not. No. I trained. Uh, these were the five that I prepared for this presentation, but I did dozens of models, and I found the answer was almost always around two hours. Amazing. Now, what I hope to do in a future paper is watch how, how gradient descent works, and I'll, I want to cluster it around two hours and test five minutes, ten minutes more, five minutes and ten minutes less, and just see if that, this is the optimal time. But I didn't have time to do it before the presentation, so I know that two hours is close to being the right answer. Now, Thank you. you can get better, but the other thing I did is Remember in the console, there's a maximum time that you're allowed to train. And I only want to do it in the console so that the, everybody that doesn't have access to SageMaker notebooks, you know, you certainly can go train longer, but I fear that it will overtrain your model if you do. All my results are from the console, yes. Right. Now, I will tell you that Every model that I have trained in the console and ran on the reInvent 2018 track got between 20 and 25% better time because you can goose the speed a little bit. Uh, yeah, uh, about the two hours, uh, wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be better to like, look at the number of iterations or yes. evaluations or something like this uh, for the future, I guess? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there's any number of different models we can look at, and now you know the stuff I'm telling you is kind of old because we now have a whole lot more factors, parameters that we can actually measure. So it's a lot different. But by next year, I'll have a whole new set of these that I can share with you and try to save you money. Uh, so your question about is iterations? One of my models used iterations. It didn't improve much. Yeah. Speed, uh, what is, so one of the things I discovered is models based upon speed oversteering and staying on the track. So if you're on the track, you get a reward, some reward, something small. If you go fast, you get a big reward. And if you don't oversteer, if you oversteer, I punish you. So, right, I slap you a little bit. And that was the most successful model uh, for a simple one, you know, maybe 10 to 12 lines of Python code. Other questions? Yeah. So the two hours training that you suggested, right, does it apply to a more complex track or is more for a relatively simple track? So I trained on the Re reInvent 2018 track and then I tested it against the reInvent 2019 track. And so that's why I saw the overfitting. The longer models didn't do as well on the new track because they were overfitted slightly. Uh, uh, another thing to do would be to actually train on a more complicated track, just basically do basic training, and then come and maybe train for a couple of hours on other tracks. That would probably build a much better general model. You know, the weights would be a little more evened out across the whole neural net. 
and the three layers. That answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Happy to stick around for other questions if you want to come up one on one. Thanks very much for having me.